going on, elect of the Lord. It's gonna be on today. Y'all bear with me, I got the heat running for a minute. It'll get quieter in a minute. I'm gonna talk a little louder so y'all can hear me over this noise. Uh, again, it's only temporary. I pray you stay with this video. It's gonna be on. I'm gonna start with Exodus 4, man. Let's dive right into this. Okay. Exodus 4, verse 2. Exodus 4, verse 2. And the Lord said unto him, He's talking to Moses, of course. Right? Yeah, I know that. Let's start with verse 1. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord had not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is in thy hand? And he said, A rod. Moses said, A rod. Let's deal with that word today, man. Moses' rod. Let's deal with Moses' rod. Oh, this is going to be interesting, man. Because <clears throat> we can hardly think of, about Moses and not think of his rod, right? I mean, <clears throat> I know they make a mythical characters like Thor you think of Thor you you think of his hammer the hammer in Thor's hand and uh, Captain America he's got that shield uh, and uh, well Moses we know him uh, and we think of him we, we tend to think of that rod because every time the Lord plague Egypt, he had Moses stretch out his rod. For example, you know, it's too many scriptures. I ain't gonna be able to hit all the scriptures. Y'all know that. But we'll hit a couple of them just for example. Because some people might not know, y'all. Some people are new to the scriptures. And uh, like verse 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 8. Let's go to verse 8. It says, And it shall come to pass, if they would not believe thee, neither hearken unto the voice the first sign that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. So we see that this rod is a sign. The rod that he gave Moses was for a sign, y'all. You might want to highlight that word sign, S-I-G-N. It's going to be deep. It's a lot of places, man. Let's go to verse 20. Let's go to verse 20. And it says, I mean... Uh, and Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass and he returned to the land of Egypt and Moses took the rod of God in his hand Moses took the rod of God in his hand see just about everywhere Moses went he took that rod right Keep that in mind. That's very important, right? Uh, let's go to Exodus. Uh, let's go to Exodus eight, y'all. And keep in mind, I ain't gonna be able to hit all these verses with this rod. There's so many verses. But stay with me. It's a point to this. Right? Uh, uh, Exodus 8 and 5. Exodus 8 and 5. And it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thy hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause the frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. See that? Stretch forth thy hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, over the ponds, and cause the frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. See, uh, that rod, man, was working miracles. That rod was doing signs and wonders, right? You better in mind, I'm setting it up, y'all. Y'all know how I do it. I gotta set it up. 
Let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 7. Go to Exodus 7 with me. Verse 9. Exodus 7, verse 9, y'all. And it says, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say to Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses went, no, and, and, and Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they said, so as the Lord had commanded, and Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Verse 11, Then Pharaoh also called his wise men and sorcerers down the magicians of Egypt, and they also did like manner with enchantments. Because the wicked, our enemies, they got enchantments. They got sorcery and witchcraft. Familiar spirits, keep that in mind. They they on the left hand side, y'all. Moses and Aaron is on the right hand side. Verse 12. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Aaron's rod, remember Aaron's on the right hand side, right? And Aaron's rod swallowed up their rod. Let's go to uh, Numbers 17. Number 17. It's all good. There we go. Got a little temporary light there. Let's go to Numbers 17. And it says, uh, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take every man, one of them, a rod. Right? According to their house. <clears throat> and where I'm going with this, you got a rod too. I got a rod. All the elect got a rod. Okay. So he's telling Moses, let's read that again. And the Lord speaking to Moses, speak unto the children of Israel. He's talking to all of us. And take every man, one of them, a rod according to their house, the house of their fathers and of their princes. According to the house of their fathers, twelve rods, twelve tribes, twelve rods. Write thou every man's name upon his rod, and thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers, and thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation. Right? That represents the sanctuary. Before the testimony. Right, where I will meet with you, and you know today that testimony. I'm, this is a little uh, 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 spoiler alert. That testimony, that tabernacle of congregation, that's Jesus Christ today. Where I will meet you, and the Father meets us with Jesus. Remember, no man can come unto the Father but by me. Uh, John fourteen verse six and seven. Jesus said that, and it shall come to pass. This the Old Testament is just a shadow. It's just a shadow of Jesus Christ. Okay. And it shall come to pass that the man's rods whom I shall choose shall blossom. Okay. It's going to bear fruit. Okay. It's going to bud and bear fruit. It ain't going to be thorns and thistles. Remember the flesh, Adam and Eve, when they sin, everything turned, it would be thorns and thistles. Everything became a curse. Now, this is going to be an opposite. It's like you grabbing a tree branch from your front yard, your backyard, wherever, outside. You bring it in your house. It's, it's on the ground. It's practically dead. It's dead. It ain't connected to nothing. Broken branch. You bring it in your house, lay it on the table. Overnight, you got some apples. You got some oranges. It doesn't blossom. It doesn't bear some fruit, man. You know? That that branch, that dead branch, now them bear fruit. Ain't connected to nothing. That's a miracle. That's a sign. That's a miracle. Let's keep going. And I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel 
whereby they murmur against you. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one their princes gave him a rod, a piece, for each prince, one according to their father's houses, even twelve rods, and a rod of Aaron was um, among their rods. And Moses laid up before the rods the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow, the next day, Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded. Aaron's rod brought forth the fruit. Right? The other rods just stayed dead rods. Right? And brought forth buds and bloomed and blossomed and yielded almonds. And Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord unto the children of Israel. And they looked and took every man his rod. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against the rebels. Yeah? And thou shalt quite take away their murmurings from me that they die not. See, the Lord hated murmuring and complaining that shouldn't of Israel do. Right? So he killed, you know, he slayed us through a lot of Israelites for murmuring and complaining. So he wanted to shut their mouths. So this rod that bears fruit, that's like resurrection life. The, the life that bears resurrection fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, that's supposed to shut the mouths of everybody else. Like when God raised Jesus from the dead, that's supposed to shut everybody's mouth up. We're supposed to, all. Oh, well, that's the one we're supposed to bow down to. That's the one God said, this is the one I choose. That's why it says the Acts was the two that let the whole house of Israel know that surely God had made that same Jesus, both Lord and Christ, so we all supposed to look to Jesus. Now understand, God had made this man that he raised from the dead, both Lord and Christ. And Moses did so, and the Lord commanded him, so he did. And the children of Israel spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, we die, we perish, we perish. Whosoever cometh anything near to the tabernacle of the Lord shall die. Shall we be consumed with dying? But, but not the, not uh, those the Lord choose to come to the sanctuary. And remember, those are the resurrected ones, man. That's where I'm going with this. Is that uh, let's go to a uh, Second Kings nineteen thirty. Second Kings. Second Kings. Y'all stay with me. I'm setting it up. So we can get better understanding. A lot of people don't have understanding. Second uh, Kings 19 and 30. Here's what that Aaron's rod is. Here's what that Aaron's rod is for the children of Israel. Uh, and the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah. It said the house of Judah, right? Remember, Jesus Christ come from this tribe, Judah. Now he said, I'm going to save Judah first, right? Right? So this is a prophecy of uh, the, new, the new law. Okay? The new life. This is what he after. Aaron's rod was a pre-picture of Jesus Christ. The rod in Moses' hand was a pre-picture of Jesus Christ. Okay? Y'all stay with me. It's going to make better sense as we go. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward. This is death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah. Right? The house of Judah shall yet again take root downward, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and bear fruit upward. You a branch. I'm a branch. Now that root is Jesus Christ. Who's the root and offspring of David? I think that's uh, Revelation 22, 16. Revelation 22, 16. Jesus said he's the root and the offspring of David. That's our root. If he's David's root, he's your root and my root. This is the only way we can become a house, part of the house of David. Is take hold of this root. That's your Romans 11. That's Romans 11. Take root downward, bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. 
and they shall escape out of Mount Zion. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. And that's where we from, Mount Zion. All right? And we got to escape Babylon. Babylon is the spirit of this world. All right? That's what we got to escape from. How you escape? You run to God's holy mountain. Psalms 11, verse 1. Your soul got to uh, uh, come up to his holy mountain. Where Moses kept going? To the mountain. Where he kept calling Moses? To the mountain. To the mountain. Where he called Abraham? To the mountain. Abraham had uh, found his sacrifice on Mount Moriah, right? Upon the holy mountain. Moses had to go Mount Sinai. Right? Me and you got to go to Mount Zion. Sinai and Zion are saying, really, it's same place, different names, different dispensations of time. Mount Sinai and Mount Zion. Verse 32, therefore, thus said the Lord concerning, just like the God of uh, 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 the Old Testament is Jesus Christ. Same God, just different dispensations of time. Y'all, the Lord do different things. We got to keep up with him. He do different things and different dispensations of time. That's why when you exit a six, he said, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't know me by a certain name. But they knew me as God Almighty. He reveals himself different ways, different dispensations of time. Okay? Therefore, thus said the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, that's Zion, the city of the Lord, right? Nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with a shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return. Right? He, he came, uh, 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 that's self-explanatory. He going back the same way he came, empty hand. And shall not come into this city. He ain't coming into the Lord's city, said the Lord. Verse 34, for I will defend this city. That's your uh, uh, Ecclesiastics. Chapter 9, 14 through 18. Jesus came to build this city of the Lord. The house of the Lord. With wisdom. Right? Jesus came to build this city. Again, Ecclesiastics. Chapter 9, verse 14 through 18. Jesus came to build this city. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake. And for my servant David's sake. All right, David, and Jesus is called David, too, because he's the son of David, right? All right, uh, so y'all with me so far? Because that's Ecclesiastes. Y'all already know we did a previous video on that. Uh, Ecclesiastes 9, 14 to 18, the city that the wise man, uh, uh, do I need to go there? Let me go to just temporary, y'all, because some people didn't see that video. I don't have no idea what I'm talking about. We can take our time because if we got to do part two, three, four, five with this video, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it because a lot I want to say in it. So we might have to do this video in several parts. Ecclesiastes 9 14. There was a little city and few men within it. Right? This is Zion, y'all. This is the city of God. And there came a great king against it and besieged it. And built great bulwarks against it. And now there was found in it a poor wise man. This is Jesus Christ. Wise man, man. Poor wise man. And he by his wisdom delivered this city. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, right? He brought us that spirit. The spirit of fear of God. Uh, uh. Right? And delivered the city, Zion. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Nobody wants to remember him. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised. He came unto his own, his own received him not. And his words are not heard. Right? The words of a wise man are heard and quiet. Get in a secret place. Quiet place. Pray. 
fast, study, show yourself approved. The words of the wise, wise man are heard and quiet. In the quiet place. More than the city of him that ruleth among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. One sinner destroyeth much good. But wisdom is better than weapons of war. Where you going with this king suit, man? I'm trying to set it up. I'm trying to set it up. You got to have a little patience with it, brother. Now, let's go to Proverbs. What is it, 24? I think I want Proverbs 24. Just have a little patience with your brother. Some people want it right away. Sometimes it's got to be set up. Proverbs 24, 3. Here it is. Through wisdom is a house built it. And, and by understanding, it is established. Okay. Through wisdom is the house built, and by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall thy chambers be filled with precious, pleasant riches. Right? By knowledge. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, man, come from the Lord. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsels thou shalt make thy war. See, we got to make war with wise counsel. Okay, with wise counsel. Did they only say that? Wise counsel bring you righteous. And that counsel is the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Right? Three, three, th uh, there's three to bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. First John 5, 7. For by wise counsel thou shalt make war. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Right. Right. That goes with uh, Revelations uh, 19.11. I think I might have to go there. Stay with me. I know I'm all over the place right now. Stay with me. Sometimes you got to do that, man. Sometimes you got to do that for it to come together. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. Now this is your wise counsel right here. In righteousness he does judge and make war. Because he brought us what? Righteous judgment. That's your rod, man. Ah, uh, spoiler alert. That's your rod. That's the rod of Moses. Righteous judgment. John 7 and 24. Okay, that's, that's your rod. Righteous judgment. These words are in red. Judge not. Then it say in righteousness he does judge and make war. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous Judgment. This is your rod of iron. But judge righteous judgment. The Lord came into the earth for this this reason. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, judge righteous judgment. Where I want to go. Uh, Psalms 96. Let's go to Psalms 96. Psalms 96. And verse 13. Before the Lord, he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. See that? He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Now, there was a time we didn't have righteousness in the world. Remember that? That's when the wicked... The wicked bear rule. When there's no light, when there's no no one to stand up against the wicked. Let's get that. The wicked bear rule. That's uh Psalms uh let's go to Psalms 94. Stay with me. That's what Moses was doing with the children of Israel. He delivered them with righteousness. Uh, we ain't done with Moses. By far, we ain't done. Psalms Y'all get y'all a snack. 
something to drink, you know, and kick back. You know, if you just want to listen to the video, just kick back. I'll try and show some uh, scriptures on the screen, but for the most part, you don't have to do that. You can just kick back and listen to this video. Psalms 94, what we want, y'all. Psalms 94 and uh, 15. Psalms 94, 15. But judgment shall return unto righteousness. See that? Judgment shall return unto righteousness. Judge, righteous, judgment. This is what the Lord came to do. And all the upright in heart shall follow it. Are you upright in heart? Well, you got to judge right to judgment. That's your rod of iron. That's your rod of iron. Look at verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? With righteous judgment. With righteous judgment. That's what Moses brought to Pharaoh. He said, let my people go. <laughs> let my people go. All right? Uh, there was a whole lot more in uh, Proverbs 24. But for time's sake, I don't think we're going to be able to get it. But you got to stand in the gate, man. If you stand in the Lord's gate, you got it. Let's go to Psalm 127. Because the Lord built his house with his wisdom. There's a lot of, a lot of places I want to go man psalms 127 okay 105 10 20 uh, okay uh psalms 127 i gotta find it y'all psalms 127 i got a weird phone Sounds 199. It don't show all the numbers on this phone. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Psalms 127. Finally got it. Psalms 127. It said, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Okay, remember, he built his house with his wisdom. He built Zion. The Lord established Zion. So if people are not in Zion, like your Christianity, for example, the Lord didn't build that. Muslim, the Muslim world, the Lord didn't build it. Organized religion, he didn't build that. The Lord did not build that. The house he built is the scriptures. If upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail again. That's the scriptures. He said, these scriptures are written of me. He came, I said, he said, he came in the volume of the book. The volume of the book. The scriptures is the wisdom. Right? Knowledge and understanding. Remember we read that? A house got to be built with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We read that. Right? So the Lord got to build this house. Except the Lord build it. Let's read that again. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain to build it. Jehovah Witness, you laboring in vain. Jesus didn't build that. Right? Hebrew Israelites under Mosaic law... That house you doing, that house you, that, that house is destroyed. That house is gone. You're not in the house of Jesus Christ. Moses told you to believe on him. Uh, uh, the, the brother that God would raise up after him and coming into his likeness, the mediator. Moses told you about the mediator. He didn't know what tribe he was coming out of. But he said, let's get that. Let me get where Moses said that because some of y'all. Remember Jesus said, Moses wrote to me. Jesus said that. Moses wrote to me. But let's go to Acts real quick. I'm just trying to paint the picture, y'all. Give, give understanding. Acts 7 and uh, 
37. Acts 7, 37. This is that Moses, right? The one with the rod, which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you. Didn't he raise Jesus? Of your brethren, like unto me, a king, a mediator. Moses was a mediator. Jesus Christ is a mediator. Him shall you hear. Right? What was the problem with Israel in the Old Testament? They did not obey my voice. God said they would not obey my voice. The New Testament, God said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. That's the same voice. If the God was saying in the Old Testament, obey my voice, obey my voice. And then the New Testament said, this is my beloved son. Here. That's the same voice. He's telling you to hear my voice through this man. The mediator. The interpreter. Jesus Christ. You need a medi We need a mediator between God and man. We need an interpreter. God speaks a different language than us. Right? So Jesus came in our language. As an interpreter. Joseph and his brothers. Well, well, we, well I, I didn't did that in other videos. His bro Joseph's brothers didn't recognize Joseph after so long a time. Joseph knew them, but they didn't know Joseph. Joseph made himself estranged to them. That represents resurrection. After so long a time, Joseph was dead to them. Joseph was dead even to his father Jacob. It was many years, after so many years, when Joseph resurfaced, resurrected, uh, they didn't even recognize Joseph. Joseph even talked to them in a different language he, through interpreters. He talked to his brother through interpreters. Even though he knew their language, they didn't recognize him. And he was testing their heart to see if they changed. He put them to all kind of tests, his brothers. He was putting their cash back in their sacks, right? He was holding one of them hostage. Tell them, go find, get, get your little brother, bring your little brother back. They was testing them, see was they with any changes in them. You know, you know, the Lord tests us. He's testing you with his word. Every day. That manner. The word is first manner. It's to prove you. To try you. To see where you up. Be obedient. Will you fear him? Will you follow these instructions? He ain't reveal himself to you. He ain't reveal himself to his brothers to after they passed the test. After he saw that they okay, they sorry. They are sorry for they lost the brother. Because they felt in their heart, they jo Joseph, they really believed Joseph was dead. Right? And he saw, because they told him the truth. We we all brothers are one man. One of our brothers is, is gone. You know, the other little one, he's at home with, with our father. They was truthful. You know, so they poured out their heart to this, this king, Joseph. You know, he was, he was next to the king. He had the power of the king. The king bumped him up above all the Egyptians, above his own people. Just like Daniel. Daniel was so tight. He was a Judite, man. He was from Judah. The Babylonian king bumped Daniel above all the Babylonians. That's how tight we are. We the children of Israel, man. We get bumped to the top. Straight up to the top. You know, the resurrection life takes us to the top. Salvation brings us to the top. We set on high. It's time for us to step it up. Through the scriptures, man. It's not sin. To say what the scriptures say. We sit on high. At the right hand of God. With Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus Christ. That's not sin. That's giving God glory. You know. But you got to have the right character. You know. Some of y'all talk too much. Some, some of us got some flawed characters. 
And those things got to die. That's got to die out of you. You know? The corrupt spring got to die out of you. All the corrupt corruption that's in you. Corrupt conversation. The Bible said corrupt communication, corrupt good manner. Corrupt communication, corrupt your mannerism. And these little wicked women, a lot of these women carry witch spirits, man. They deceiving you, brothers. Deceiving you. got to pass through that. I had witches following me. Trying to seduce me. It was just the scriptures kept me from falling. The scriptures, especially in Proverbs, that strange woman, the evil woman, the woman that flattered with her eyelids, her beauty. You know, her, her mouth is smoother than oil. Woman can seduce you with her beauty and her voice, her words. And a lot of them is in witchcraft. They practice witchcraft. The Bible said an adulterous woman will hunt for a precious life. Your life is precious. Jesus died to prove that. He came to prove that your life was precious to him. You know, it's, it's, you got to see yourself through his eyes. He love you. And you can't love yourself till you love you, you through the Holy Spirit. And you crucify yourself. That's what you, when you really love yourself, you go to the cross. You, you follow Jesus. You put self to death. Because that flesh will lead you to damnation, man. It'll lead you to the strange woman. If you listen to it. If you obey it. So you got to deny self. That's what Jesus said. Deny self. The real you is the spirit of Christ. Let me say that again. The real you is the spirit of Christ. Of Christ. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel, which spake to him and Mount Sinai. That's who God is raising up. That's what he's telling you right here. The same he that was with us in the wilderness. Him shall you hear. Let's read that again, man. Moses, which said to the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren. He's coming from the 12 tribes. Like unto me, he's going to be your mediator. He's going to be your king. Him shall ye hear. He's pointing to Jesus Christ. That's why this is in the New, New Testament. He's telling us. This is he that was in the church. Jesus Christ was in the church in the wilderness. He was that rock. Right? That followed. He was that rock uh, that the water came out. He was giving us water. He's the fountain of living waters. He was the, he, you know, he, he was all that, that rod in Moses' hand. That was Jesus. I'm going to show you that. Which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. Jesus was the one talking to Moses. In the burning fiery bush. Right? And with our fathers. He, that was the voice we heard. That was Jesus' voice. That's why in the New Testament, he said, this is my beloved son. Here you he is. It's the same voice. He's in a different manifestation. Same voice, different manifestation. Does that make sense? Who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey. They didn't obey Jesus. But thrust him from them, and in their hearts turn back again into Egypt, back into captivity. They turn back into captivity. They rather have death than life. They rather have death than life. Man, there's a lot of places I want to go. Uh, trying to. Y'all can hang, right? I'm sure you can. Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. 
Isaiah 45, y'all. Hope y'all hanging with me. You get you something to eat? Something to drink? Right? Because we might be a minute. We might be a minute with this one. You know? Sometimes teacher keep you after class. You know? Teacher take you a different route sometimes. Uh... Isaiah 45, verse 3, and it says, And I will give thee the treasures of darkness, hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Okay? Let's jump to verse 11. Let's jump to verse 11. For time's sake. Thus said the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker asked me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Ask me things, right, to come concerning my sons. Now, this is about his sons here. This is the Old Testament talking about sons. You don't see that too much. Right? Things to come. Concerning my son. So this is the new covenant. He's talking about the new covenant. Because he's talking about sons. You don't see him dealing with sons. In the old testament. You don't see us calling him. Father in the old testament. Heavenly father. But it, it prophesies of it. You know. But you don't see individuals calling him father. Because we couldn't do that. Until the time of Jesus Christ. So he's talking about right here, the time of Jesus Christ concerning the works of my hands. Jesus Christ is the work of God's hand. Command ye me. Now watch this. Verse 12. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I even my hands have stretched out the heavens and all their hosts have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness. That word righteousness again. This is. I had raised him up. This is one one Moses was just telling us about in Acts 7, verse 37. He shall raise up a prophet like unto me. This, this is what Moses was talking about. I had raised him up in righteousness. When Jesus rose from the dead, that's the life he's after right there. That life, the life before that, Jesus followed faithfully and in truth. He was full of faith and truth. He fulfilled the will. By what? Laying down his life. He drank the cup. He laid down his life. That's what we needed. A sacrifice. Simple as that. He was the blood sacrifice. He was the perfect man. He was God. He wasn't just a man. He was God. He was a God man. He was God in the flesh. To tear down the veil. So we can what? Come unto him. We can approach him. He shall build my city. There it is. Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain and build it. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman wake up in vain. He shall build my city. With his what? Flesh and blood, man. His words. He said, my, my flesh is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed. This is the city. To, to eat of Jesus Christ. To live off of Jesus Christ. We live off his flesh. Remember, he broke the bread, said, this is my body. He passed the cup. He said, this is my blood of the New Testament, of the New Covenant. God's city is, his, is through his son. Through his son. You can't say, God hideth. He hides in the son. He hidden in the son. And he shall let go my captives. He delivers us by what? His flesh and blood, man. He's our bread and water. You can say he's our bread and water. Not for price nor reward, said the Lord of hosts. Thus said the Lord. Uh, I ain't, we ain't got to read that. Let's jump to 15, though. Verily thou art a God that hideth thyself. There it is. O God of Israel, the Savior. He hid himself in his son. Ask me things concerning my son. I shall raise him up in righteousness. He shall build my city. Right? And that's the eternal city. That's the kingdom of God. 
Yeah, that was plain. Y'all know that was plain. Now we got to get back to the ride, don't we? We got to get back to the ride. Uh, or else some of y'all going to say, well, you didn't. What was that rod about? Uh, well, we're going to got to kick it into another gear. We can kick it into another gear or two. We'll just show you something. Let's just show you something. Uh, let's go to Judges 7, 18. Judges 7, 18. The Lord going to have to bring this. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Uh, Judges 7, we trusting in the Holy Spirit like it always, right? Judges 7, 18. Judges 7, 18. When I blow uh, with a trumpet, and I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say the sword of the Lord and Gideon. Y'all see that? The sword of the Lord and Giddy. The reason I said that because when the Lord chooses a man or a king to sit on the throne, he chose judges. Remember these judges? Even Samson. When the Lord chooses a man, he said, I'm going to deliver you by the hand of Samson, for example. He said, I'm going to deliver you uh, by the hand of Saul, King Saul. Okay, keep that in mind. If, just because the Lord chooses a man, uh, let's go to Judges 8, 22. Watch this, right here, watch this. Don't mean you take your eyes off God. The problem with the children of Israel, that's what they was doing. They, at times, taking their eyes off God. The sword of the Lord in Gideon, right? <clears throat> this is Judges 8, 22. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's sons also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. They said, let's read that again. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's sons also. For thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. So even though the Lord raised up rulers uh, uh, like Gideon and, and Samson or Saul and he was fighting for the children of Israel. The Lord always wanted to be our root, our king. Remember Israel asked for a king? They asked for a king. And the scripture said that uh, the Lord was our king. The whole time the Lord was our king. Let's get, let's get that real quick. 1 Samuel 10, 17. Stay with me, y'all. I'm setting it up. I told you it might be a part three or four of this video. 1 Samuel 10, let's go there, because I'm setting it up, because I'm giving it some great understanding. In just a second, you might not feel you got it now, but hold on. 1 Samuel 10, what I say? 1 Samuel 10, 17. First, and Samuel called the people together uh, unto the Lord at Mizpah, and said unto the children of Israel, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all kingdoms and of them that oppress you. See, it was the Lord the whole time. And you have this day rejected your God who himself saved you out of all your adversities and your tribulations. And you have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now, therefore, present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. It was the Lord the whole time. Even though we had judges and kings over us, he sent prophets. The Lord was our king and deliverer. Same with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to restore the God of Israel as our king, as our head. And this is forever. 
the God of Israel came in the flesh. We just read that in Isaiah 45. I'll give you the treasures of darkness, hidden riches and secret place that you might know that I, the Lord, am the God of Israel. That's it in a nutshell. That rod in Moses' hand was the Lord. Now we got to go. Now let's shift gears. We just got to go into a part two. I know this video is about to die. Now we shift gears. Now we shift gears. Like I said, Jesus came to restore the God of Israel as our king, as our head. That's 1 Samuel 12, 12. Let's get that real quick. I hope I got time for that. 1 Samuel 12, 12. 1 Samuel 12, 12. And when he saw Nahash the king, the children of Amnon came against you. You said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us when the Lord your God was your king. The Lord our God was our king. Now, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 10, 10. Jeremiah 10, 10. He just came to take his place. He came in the flesh to take his place back, man. To get his people back. To restore his people unto him. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God. And everlasting king. Jesus Christ. King of Israel, right? John 1, 49. At his wrath the earth shall tremble. And the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. That's what's coming. Let's read that again. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and everlasting king. This is forever. This is what Jesus is. The Savior. Remember, he's, he told us about the sons of God. That was prophecy. The works of his hand. Jesus said, I, I came to finish the works of my father. John 4, 34. Right? That was the works of God's hand. He said, ask me things concerning my sons. 